Marcelo José Copyright das Neves Alves Catano, was a Portuguese politician and scholar, who was the last Prime Minister of the Estado Novo regime, from 1968 until his overthrow in the Carnation Revolution of 1974. Early political and academic career, he was a son of José Copyright Maria de Almeida Alves Catano and his first wife Josefa Maria das Neves. Graduated as a licentiate and later a doctorate in law, Catano was a cathedratic professor at the Faculty of Law of the University of Lisbon, where he graduated and of which he would also become the ninth dean or rector. A conservative politician and a self-proclaimed reactionary in his youth, Catano started his political career in the 1930s under the authoritarian regime of Antecube Nio de Oliveira Salazar. He soon became an important figure in the Estado Novo government, and in 1940 was appointed chief of the Portuguese youth organization. Catano progressed in his academic career at the university, publishing several works and lecturing law. While in jail due to political causes, an LVARO Cunhau, law student, the future leader and founder of the Portuguese Communist Party, submitted his final thesis on the topic of abortion before a faculty jury that included Marcelo Catano. Between 1944 and 1947 Catano was Minister of the Colonies and since 1947 President of the Executive Board of the National Union. He served as President of the Cooperative Chamber between 1949 and 1955. From 1955 to 1958 Catano was the number two of the regime, as Minister attached to the Presidency of the Council of Ministers, second only to Salazar himself, who was approaching retirement age. His relationship with Salazar was tense at times, hindering him from becoming clearly a successor. Back to the academic career while maintaining formally important political functions such as executive president of the National Union, Catano was the ninth rector of the University of Lisbon from 1959 on, but the academic crisis of 1962 led him to resign after protesting students clashed with riot police in the university's campus. On the other hand, Students who were supportive of the regime, tried to boycott the anti-regime activism. There were indeed three generations of militants of the radical right at the Portuguese universities and schools between 1945 and 1974, guided by a revolutionary nationalism partly influenced by the political subculture of European neo-fascism. The core of these radical students' struggle lay in an uncompromising defense of the Portuguese Empire in the days of the authoritarian regime. Prime Minister, in August 1968, at 79, Salazar suddenly suffered a stroke after a fall in his home. After 36 years as Prime Minister of the Estado Novo regime, a personal creation, he was removed from power by President Arma Copyright Rico Toma S. After weighing a number of choices, Toma S. appointed Catano to replace Salazar on September 27, 1968. However, no one informed Salazar about this decision. By some accounts, when Salazar died in July 1970, he still believed he was Prime Minister. Many people hoped that the new 102nd Prime Minister would soften the edges of Salazar's authoritarian regime and modernize the economy. Catano moved on to foster economic growth and some social improvements, such as the awarding of a monthly pension to rural workers who had never had the chance to pay Social Security. The objectives of Catano's pension reform were threefold, enhancing equity, reducing fiscal and actuarial imbalance, and achieving more efficiency for the economy as a whole, for example, by establishing contributions less distortive to labor markets or by allowing the savings generated by pension funds to increase the investments in the economy. Some large-scale investments were made at national level, such as the building of a major oil processing center and signs. The economy reacted very well at first, but into the 1970s some serious problems began to show due in part to two-digit inflation and to the short-term effects of the 1973 oil crisis. On the political side, Catano's power was largely held in check by Toma S., who had been largely a figurehead under Salazar. This was due more to a balance of power and personalities than any constitutional provision. As a result, there wasn't much that Catano actually could or was willing to do. He considered running for president, which would have given him more power, but dismissed the idea. 
Although Catano had been one of the architects of the Estado Novo, he took some steps to blunt the harsher edges of the regime in the so-called political spring. He referred to his regime as a social state. The PIDE, the dreaded secret police, was renamed the DGS. He also eased press censorship and allowed the first independent labor union since the 1920s. The opposition was allowed to run in the 1969 elections, though it was formally possible since 1945, but again with no realistic chance of winning any seats. The National Assembly was not conceived as a chamber for parties, but merely for popular representatives, chosen and elected on single lists. The 1969 and 1973 legislative elections changed little in that practice, and the National Union won all seats, as it happened before. The changes from the political spring didn't go far enough for large elements of the population who were eager for more freedom and had no memory of the instability that preceded Salazar. However, even these meager reforms had to be extracted with some effort from the more hardline members of the government, Toma S. above all. At bottom, Catano was still an authoritarian himself, and didn't understand democracy. He was very disappointed that the opposition was not content with the meager reforms that he was able to wring out of the hardliners. Indeed, the elections of 1969 and 1973, as in past elections, were characterized by harsh repression of opposition elements. After the 1973 poll, Various hardliners in the Salazarist to copyright light used their closeness to Toma S to pressure Catano into abandoning his reform experiment. Catano had little choice but to accept this, having expended nearly all of his political capital to enact his reforms in the first place. Since the beginning of the 1960s, the Portuguese overseas provinces in Africa had been struggling for independence but the government in Lisbon was not willing to concede and Salazar sent troops to fight the guerrilla and terrorism of the independence movements. By 1970, the war in Africa was consuming as much as 40% of the Portuguese budget and there was no sign of a final solution in sight. At a military level, a part of Guinea was de facto independent since 1973, but the capital and the major towns were still under Portuguese control. In Angola and Mozambique, Independence movements were only active in a few remote countryside areas from where the Portuguese army had retreated. However, their impending presence and the fact that they wouldn't go away dominated public anxiety. In addition, throughout the war period Portugal faced increasing dissent, arms embargoes and other punitive sanctions imposed by most of the international community. After spending the early years of his priesthood in Africa, the British priest Adrian Hastings created a storm in 1973 with an article in the Times about the Wiri Army massacre in Mozambique, revealing that the Portuguese army had massacred 400 villagers at the village of Wiri Amu, near Tet, in December 1972. His report was printed a week before Catano was due to visit Britain to celebrate the 600th anniversary of the Anglo-Portuguese alliance. Portugal's growing isolation following Hastings's claims has often been cited as a factor that helped to bring about the Carnation Revolution coup which deposed the Catano regime in 1974. By the early 1970s, while the counter-insurgency war was won in Angola, it was less than satisfactorily contained in Mozambique and dangerously stalemated in Portuguese Guinea from the Portuguese point of view so the Portuguese government decided to create sustainability policies in order to allow continuous sources of financing for the war effort in the long run. In November 13, 1972, a sovereign wealth fund was enacted through the Decree Law Decree QLENA 448-72 and the Ministry of Defense Ordinance Portaria 696-72, in order to finance the counterinsurgency effort in the Portuguese overseas territories. In addition, new decree laws were enforced in order to cut down military expenses and increase the number of officers by incorporating a regular militia as if they were regular military academy officers. Overthrow, exile and death, by the beginning of 1974, signals of rebellion increased. The armed forces movement was formed within the army and started planning a coup d'état copyright tat when the Estado Novo. In March, an unsuccessful attempt against the regime was made. By that time, Catano had offered his resignation to the president more than once, but it was denied. 
there was now little attempt or political possibility to control the opposition's movements. On April 25, 1974 the military overthrew the regime in the Carnation Revolution. There was almost no resistance. The combined African independentist guerrilla forces of the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, and the National Liberation Front of Angola, in Angola, PAIGC in Portuguese Guinea, and Frelimo in Mozambique, succeeded in their nationalistic rebellion when their continued guerrilla warfare prompted elements of the Portuguese armed forces to stage a coup at Lisbon in 1974. The Portuguese Armed Forces Movimento das Fora section as Armadas overthrew the Lisbon government in protest of ongoing war in Portuguese Guinea that seemed to have no military end in sight, as well as in rebellion against the new military laws that were to be presented next year in order to cut down military expenses and incorporate militia and military academy officers in the army branches as equals. Catano resigned and was flown under custody to the Madeira Islands where he stayed for a few days. He then flew to exile in Brazil, where he died in Rio de Janeiro of a heart attack in 1980. According to the film April Captains, Catano, prior to boarding the plane that would take him to exile, thanked his captors for treating him well and wished them the best of luck with the country. In the film, the character of Catano is played by the actor Ricardo Pays. Publications, Marcelo Catano published several books including several highly rated law books and two books of memoirs in exile, Minas Mamá Cubed Reales de Salazar ISBN B0000 E8 L13 and Epuimento. He was one of the world's top authorities in administrative law, some of his works being studied even in Soviet universities. He also wrote Os Nativos na Economia Africana in 1954. During his exile in Brazil, Catano pursued academic activities, and published works on administrative and constitutional law. Marriage and Descendants On October 27, 1930 Catano married Maria Teresa Teixeira de Coira Cube des de Barros, ironically the sister of anti-fascist politician Henrique de Barros, first and only president of the Constituent Assembly of Portugal, daughter of writer Joe Pound O de Barros and wife Raquel Teixeira de Coira Cube des and paternal granddaughter of the first Viscount of Marina Grande and had four children, Josa copyright Maria de Barros Alves Catano, married firstly to Maria Jo Pando Rosano Garcia de Leista, daughter of Jo Pando Catano Sors da Silveira Pereira Forges de Leista, and wife Maria Jalia Cardoso Rosano Garcia, whom he divorced, and had issue, and married secondly as her second husband to Maria Laura do Sovereign Rodrigues Lua S. Divorced with issue from Edmundo Gasta Pando da Costa Ribeiro da Silva and daughter of Anticube Nio Carlos Luas and wife Ernestina da Lana Section A do Sovereign Rodrigues, a distant relative of the first Viscount of Belva, and at issue. Joe Pando de Barros Alves Catano, an architect and the 1332nd associate of the Club Torum Aquico, married to French Frener Section Ois Michel Nicolas, and at issue. Miguel de Barros Alves Catano, married to Maria Josa Copyright de Freitas Pereira Lupi, daughter of Josa Copyright Lupi, of Italian male line descent, and wife Maria Arma Copyright Lea de Freitas Pereira, and at issue. Ana Maria de Barros Alves Catano, married in Lisbon, Alvalade, in 1997 as his second wife to Catano Maria Reinhardt Vera Pando da Viga. Divorced with issue from Maria Teresa Nunz de Albuquerque Chiota Cube Nio Pereira, a renowned architect, without issue. Notes and references